ahora. sacred conversations and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us come into the presence of all that is holy as our candles are lighted by veterans Bob Uzo and Stanley Baptiste. Stanley, thank you for lighting our candles and for serving our country, as well as all those veterans who have gathered in this room. Thank you for serving, and thank you for your sacrifice. As was mentioned, I'm Jonathan Morgan, and I am delighted to be here. I've spoken to Joy a number of times about this congregation, and I've been so excited to be with you, and I know I know that the light of God's love is alive in this place. My wife Lisa and I moved to Rhode Island about oh, almost two years ago now. My wife Lisa is over there. And uh, we have just been delighted to get to know this state and to feel so welcomed by its people. So let us join together in our call to worship. God sends light to us this day and invites us to meet one another in this light. Humble yourselves for the worship of God, that you may be empowered to serve. God calls us to trust with steady hearts and to serve with the righteous compassion. Seek not for lofty words of wisdom, but for powerful demonstrations of God's way. God makes us to be the salt of the earth and lights to show God's works in the world.
join me now in the prayer of confession. God of light, we confess that we have gone astray and have left your light. We follow the dim lights of the world of success and fortune. We follow the dim lights that call us to be more religious by following rules. We follow the fading light of personal salvation without care for the well-being of all of our siblings. Forgive us for not seeking the true light of your love for all the world. Forgive us for not following the ways of Jesus, who commanded us to love one another. Call us to be light bearers of love, compassion, and justice, in which the mystery of your love is revealed. In the name of Jesus the Messiah, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Laying aside judgment, God offers redemption. Setting aside anger, God embraces with grace. Letting go of grief, God pours living waters to cool fevers of doubt. This is the good news, my friend. God's steadfast love endures forever. to each and every child. This we know. And so we come now to celebrate the gift of God's grace and the sacrament of baptism in the life of a dear one in our midst. Who likes to make her voice known? <laughs> this is a holy moment. Time to remember the sacred blessings of life, a time to remember ourselves that we are all a part of the human family of God. Today we celebrate the life of Solomon Jackson. And we know that in God's creation there is no other child precisely like Solomon. She possesses special qualities and potentialities, a unique and special creation by our loving God. Today we remember how Jesus loved the little children and blessed each one. So it is that that is why we rejoice at the beginning of Solon's sacred journey, that we will have its start in this beloved sacred community. This journey is marked by the promise given by Selene's parents and her grandparents, and by all the people of this congregation as we seek to show God's love to one another as revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Selene is wearing a very special christening bed gown that was made for Bryn by her grandmother, Leslie Coke. Kristen's sister. The gown was also worn by Bryn's two brothers and men. Each name and birth date has been embroidered on the back of the gown. And 
And so I asked and his parents, Brandon and Rodney, you have come now to present Solen for baptism. Is it your decision and desire that your child be baptized into the Christian faith? If so, please say, it is. It is. Do you promise with God's help, by your life and teaching, to lead Solen towards a deeper understanding of the Christian faith and into the loving service of Jesus Christ, promising that the divine life that which God gives to men is nurtured towards an understanding of God's great love for all people. If so, please say, we do. We do. Do you promise to guide and instruct your child that she will be led to communion of the Lord's table and to confirmation into faithful membership in the church? If she so desires. If so, please say, we do. <laughs> Jessica and Brady, yours is a great privilege and a holy responsibility. You've heard the sacred promises taken by those these parents. And so, do you promise, with God's help, to do everything in your power to enable these vows to be fulfilled? If so, please say, we do. Brothers and sisters in faith, will you welcome Solen joyfully as a member of our family of God, and will you support these parents and accept as our sacred responsibility the nurture of this child in order that she might grow to full humanity as we see it in Jesus Christ? If so, Brayden and Jessica, please say, we will. We will. Gracious God, giver of all life and lover of all of us, you promise to be our God and the God of all our children. Bless now with your spirit this child, whom we will baptize according to your holy word, and bless this water that it may be a sign and seal of a new life in Christ our Savior. Amen. By what name shall this child be called? Solen Estes Jackson. Solen Estes Jackson. Beautiful child. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Who loves you in the name of Jesus Christ, who will show you the way. In the name of the Holy Spirit, who will guide you along that way. May you always have God's love in your life. Beautiful, beautiful child. Okay, we're about done here. <laughs> <laughs> it is something looking into the eyes of a child, isn't it? Mm. Friends, I now present to you the newest member of the Church of Jesus Christ. So I have the honor here today to introduce to you our granddaughter, Celine Estes Jackson. And you are the newest member of this church and of the United Church of Christ. Thank you, Pastor John. Lovely. And as you know about the dress, I'm going to scoop you down here. And I'm going to introduce you and let you see all of your relatives. Some you've been seeing all along. Some are visiting. So great to have everyone. Look at all these people. But the great news is you're all the church family, so you're all relatives. So this is lovely.
Before we came to Rhode Island, my wife Lisa and I spent 10 years in Eugene, Oregon, where I served a church, which I have to say, there was one aspect of that ministry that I really regretted. People didn't believe in baptism there, and I hardly ever had a chance to baptize a child, never mind an adult. And so it was a special privilege today, an honor to be here with the family and to baptize some men. In chapter 5, Matthew begins with Jesus lifting up the most unlikely people, the poor in spirit, the meek and the merciful, those who mourn and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the pure of heart, the peacemakers, and the persecuted. And calls them blessed. What we know as the Beatitudes. In the passage that was just read, Jesus uses two common everyday elements to help his followers remember who they are and what they have to offer. Salt and light. This morning I will concentrate on one of those essential elements, light, and how we might shine as individuals in the faith and as a church community, and why it is so important, especially today. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, you call us to be your light in the shadow places, your voice in the wilderness, your hope for the hopeless. You give us strength in our weakness, peace and gentleness, words and boldness to proclaim more of you and of us less. Help us to claim this strength, this clarity of vision, this light of your love for the living of these days. We pray all this in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The memory of that fateful day is still quite vivid in my mind, even though it happened over 30 years ago. For I learned something about myself, something that was frankly rather alarming. It happened while I was walking home after a long day at the church office. Quite a few people were out on the sidewalks of Belmont Center that afternoon, busy shopping for the holidays, seeking a place to eat, or just hanging out and about. And oddly, while walking amongst the people, my fellow Belmontians, I felt compelled to do something with the book I was carrying in my hand. I decided to turn it around and hide the front cover so that no one might see what I was bringing home to read. And here's the really disturbing part, my friends. That book was the Bible. I stood there thinking, why did I do that? I'm a pastor, after all. You know, I think I was giving in to the temptation of believing that if I was known to be a Christian these days, perhaps people would see me as judgmental, harsh in their view of other people, and believing to be right, that no one else was able to carry any truth in this life. I was afraid of being judged. There was quite an awareness of how I worry. When I'm faced with the possibilities of sharing my faith in places other than within the safe confines of a beautiful sanctuary like this, too often I find myself hesitating or feeling awkward uncomfortable or reluctant to share that I have a faith that means something to me, that guides me. You would think I would have that down by now, after 40 years of being a pastor. My anniversary is tomorrow. <laughs> I better get on it. As my friend and colleague, Alison Buttrick Patton, once said, the truth is, even many of us who attend church hesitate to share this gift of light, light we sing and read and talk about. Maybe because we are resisting a label. Surely I'm here, but I'm not really religious. I've heard those words repeatedly over my 40 years as a pastor. I'm spiritual, but religious. Religious people, well, they are certain about what they believe, which in my experience is not how lots of us, including myself sometimes, think about ourselves. To be clear, I'm not passing judgment here, making fun, or suggesting that any of us ought to feel more religious. On the contrary, I'm intrigued by the frequency of the which, which we're all struggling to find the right words. That's the trouble, isn't it? What do we say? Many folk in the United Church of Christ tend to end up saying things like, well, we're not. We're not like... We don't. We're the denomination of negatives. It's hard for us to lift up a belief and say, this is what I believe. It makes a difference in my life. And I love sharing. It's not one that holds down, it lifts up, just like in the passage that we read. And I wonder, 
If we struggle to find the right words, might there be another way? Might we act in ways that will shine forth our light of faith so others might see their value in God's eyes? In January this year, while serving the Middletown Congregational Church as interim, I was shown a radiant example of how true this can be. We were in the midst of a leadership meeting in the Farnham Hall. I had before me about 20 leaders of the church. And as I was leading that session, an all-day Saturday session, a young man came in the door behind me. And in his hand, he was holding the flowers for the altar. And he said, I don't know how to get into the altar. And so I just sort of passed him off. I said, oh, the doors are open. Go ahead. And went back to my job. And one of our deacons, Alice, decided to follow him in. And it took her about 20 minutes. And I thought maybe she had skipped out on the rest of the meeting. <laughs> and when she came in, and there was an opening, she shared what happened. His name was Michael. And he was admiring the sanctuary. He said, it's so beautiful in here. And she said, well, I'm glad you like it. May I suggest that you come on Sunday? He said, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. God doesn't like me. God is angry with me. I've done some things in my life that I'm not proud of. And I, I know God doesn't like me. To which Alice said, I think we might know a different God here. For God knows us all every part of us, and loves us for exactly who we are. And so I want to invite you to church. I always sit back there in the last pew because my husband does the camera work. Come and seek me out, sit with me, so that you might feel more comfortable. Later, I learned that during the week, she went to that florist shop and met him again and invited him again. Matthew said, keep your hearts open. Be generous with your lives. Let your good works shine that many more may know of God's love and Grace. As my colleague Allison puts it, here's the good news. Jesus did not tell all those people gathered on the hillside to be dusty and dogmatic. He said, You are the light. Shine. Shine forth, let it out. You see, this is the thing. It's not about being certain of having the right words of theology that'll impress it, or checking off some checklist that God demands of us. It's about being transparent, authentic, Transparent like a window, showing forth the light of wonder of God's love in our lives, revealing the blessing of God's Spirit through our example. It's so important. Because you know this. There are many people like Michael. That young man in Middletown searching for sanctuary in this world. 
where the loving embrace of God can be known and felt. Many people, older folk, who are facing their own mortality, their growing frailty, and loss of family and friends with fear. Parents who are struggling to guide and nurture their children after a major pandemic in what is now a chaotic and disturbing world filled with political discord and too much violence. People of color who still struggle to find the acceptance in society they desire and deserve because of prejudice and bigotry. Young men and women who have been rejected by their families sorely for the fact that they were not straight. There are so many who are seeking the light of God in this world, a world that feels more divisive and hurtful and just plain mean with each passing day. And so, good people of Seekonk, the question I leave you with is this. Will you answer the call and follow the example of our sister Alice and be the light for all the world to see? Can you be as brave, as giving, and as willing as her? Will you let the love of God shine through you so that the, this world might be a brighter place. This Madeline Engel, who might have put it best when she offered, we do not draw people to Christian faith by loudly discrediting what they believe, by telling them how wrong they are and how right we are, but by showing them a light that is so lovely that they want with all their hearts to know the source of it. So, sisters and brothers, shine. Where there is sadness or skepticism, shine. Where there is fear or distrust, shine. Where there is shadow, of injustice, threatening to overcome, shine. Where there is hunger for hope or a deep thirst for connection, tell your story about sharing bread and the living water with this church, a community of faith based in God's love. And in the end, know this, being light, well, it isn't about showing off. It's about showing the radiance of God's love for a world that desperately needs radiant examples of love and grace. Friends, be that light.
are now in prayer, we remember all who are, are in our prayer concerns that are in Donna's email, especially Jenny Smith, Ralph Perak, Jean Anderson, Nate Hil Hilderson, Jim Keller, and Hazel Green. We also remember all our extended families and those who are experiencing losses and are feeling most vulnerable. We pray for all who are suffering in so many other places where survival is a struggle with very few options. And so we also pray for our church and the conference and our country. And we pray that we will have the insight and the power to seek creative ways to be sharing ourselves with others bound together by the love of Christ. Let us join together in prayer. Gentle Spirit, we praise you this morning as your light streams into the sanctuary, this holy space, brightening our lives with a gift of divine love. We give you thanks for this vision of what can be. We give you thanks for the men and women in uniform who have served this country with honor and distinction. We thank you for the life of Selin and her beautiful family. As we celebrate the start of our journey of faith, in this community of faith. Listen now, in this moment of holy silence, to the thoughts of our minds and songs of joys and concerns found deep within our hearts. Hear our silent prayer. for your presence felt here this morning. And we are grateful for the living example of your love shown so clearly through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught his followers to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Facebook page, which also gets updated a few times each week. 
Um, welcome to anybody that is joining us for the first time. We do have a guest book over in the corner, so we please ask you to sign that on the way out of the sanctuary. And we are having a new member seminar on Sunday, November 24th at 11 a.m. in room one for anyone that is interested in learning about our church and joining our church. And there is also a sign-up sheet in the hall for that. Thank you to so many people that came yesterday and assisted with the grounds cleanup. Um, we are forever grateful to every one of you, and the gardens are looking great and ready for winter. Um, we are having an open mic this Friday night, November 15th, from 6.30 to 9 p.m. in the hall. We do need your talent, so don't be shy. Please come if you have something to share with us, a, a reading or a song or some kind of a musical instrument, please come. And also plan to come and attend to just enjoy listening to everybody that is performing. It's really a fun evening and I'm glad we're having it back. And when you go over to Coffee Hour, Bryn and Rodney have um, placed a book over there, a book of blessings, that we're gonna ask you to all write a little message. They did that for Ren, and we're gonna do that again. So if you can put um, a little blessing in that book and we'll get it back to them um, at the end of the day. And the Christmas Bazaar is less than one month away. Um, and there are many opportunities for you to help as this is our largest fundraiser of the year and we wanna continue that. So the sign-up sheets are at the top of the ramp and also over in the hall. Um, they will be setting up also workshops soon for making centerpieces. So there's so many different opportunities to help. You can help behind the scenes by making something, bringing something over. You can work the day of the event. You can help with set up, clean up again. Um, it's, there's so many things to help with this. Um, enjoy your week, be safe. Please continue to reach out to others. And as we continue to worship God with our tithes, pledges, and offerings, please welcome Cindy Pearson singing, Let Me Be a Light in the Darkness. Thank you.
Let's pray. Loving God, as we bring before you our offerings for this day, we ask for a double portion of your grace so that we know we are forgiven and able to forgive. A double portion of your wisdom so that we can find our way through the confusing landscape of this modern world and guide others as well. A double portion of your peace so that we can conquer our own anxieties and so calm in the communities in which we are part. And lastly, a double portion of your courage so that we can confront injustice in our world with courage and strength. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Much of Jesus' ministry involved sharing a meal with common people. He broke bread with God's children of all type, including those who are considered less than worthy by society. In so doing, he showed us that God's abundant love has no borders. It didn't matter who you are, who you were, or who people thought you were. All were welcomed. And so, it is in the sharing of this food together that we begin to see the glimpse of God's vision of love and grace for this earth and for our lives. Come, you are all invited to the celebration of love. It matters not that you're a member of this church, but this table is open to everyone. Please join me in prayer. God of compassion and grace, we offer praise and thanksgiving for the abundance of your love shown to us each day. We remember and celebrate the gift of Jesus who walked among us, showing us how to love without limits, offer mercy without judgment, and to bring justice to the oppressed. Loving God, bring your grace-filled presence into our midst now as we share in this celebration together as your people. Amen. <coughs> and so we remember, on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his friends, the disciples, and he stopped the supper and he said, I have something to tell you. Whenever you break bread, give thanks to God. And then remember that I love you so much that I will offer my, my own body to be broken for you. Remember that I will be with you always. And then after supper, he took the cup and he lifted it up to them and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant given to everyone that you may know that you are a beloved child of God. Whenever you eat and drink of this cup, know that I am with you. So, ministering to you now in Christ's name, we offer you the bread and cup of life.
join our hearts in prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for you are faithful, and your steadfast love endures forever. May that love and unity that we feel here be with us in our daily lives, that others may come to know your presence in their lives. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our final hymn, the first and last word of earth.
We know the loving spirit is here, found in the space between us and all things, closer to us than our next breath, binding us to each other as loving siblings, even while separated by many miles. Walk in peace, my friends, always. For this worship has ended, that the service may begin. Amen. Amen.